Hey everyone, Jake here from CVP. The Canon C70 came out just over two years ago now, and today Canon has just announced the latest firmware for it, which somehow makes it even better. So today we're going to take a look at the C70's new firmware, explore everything Canon has added to the camera over the past couple of years, and also take a look at whether it's still worth buying one in 2022. Since the C70 was announced all the way back in September of 2020, Canon have released five firmware updates for it since then. And honestly, it's impressive what's been added. People who adopted the C70 early have really gotten their money's worth over those two years. Canon has added and tweaked so much, and this includes loads of little changes, but also larger updates like the addition of several custom picture profiles, the ability to record cinema raw light internally to SD cards, and both frame and interval recording modes. It really is an incredibly well-rounded package now, for any filmmaker or content creator wanting a camera that can adapt pretty much anything. This is partly thanks to its compact but easy to use design, versatile lens mount, excellent image quality and fully featured menu system. And today, thanks to the announcement of Canon's fifth firmware update for the C70, it's getting even better. We've been lucky enough to check this new firmware out early, but it will be available to download for end users in early December this year. Canon's colour science has always been a big reason why so many people grab their cameras, and when it comes to shooting quick turnaround images, Canon's YDR picture profile has been popular in their cinema line of cameras. Well, in this new firmware, Canon have actually added a new custom picture profile called Canon 709. And this uses the new Canon 709 gamma curve paired with the neutral color matrix. This should provide a similar look to the original YDR profile, but does not use super white, which can cause clipping in the highlights with YDR. If we compare the curves of the two, we can see that the highlights have been pulled down into video range, and the midtones have a little more contrast than YDR. This pull down of the highlights means that the roll off to peak white has changed, but how does this all look visually? Looking at our comparison shots between the two, we can see that there is more contrast in the midtones with the Canon 709 profile, with them rolling off towards the shadows a lot more. We can also see the highlights holding a little more saturation than the YDR clip. However, we think that the highlights aren't handled quite as nicely as they are with YDR. You can see the whites being pulled down in the Canon 709 clip, which results in the highlights looking a bit worse than the YDR clip. It's great to see that Canon has kept the YDR option in the camera, and this way you have the option to shoot whichever one you want for a certain situation. I would say that the Canon 709 profile looks like a good option for people wanting a more contrasty and saturated image straight out of the camera with no processing in post at all. YDR is a good middle ground between this new profile and C-Log2. It's a bit flatter and less saturated, but from our testing, handles highlights a touch better. It will just need maybe that little extra pop of saturation and contrast in post, which we actually do when processing YDR rushes normally. And then of course you have C-Log2 and C-Log3 there for when you want to shoot log for the most dynamic range and flexibility in post. One of the biggest criticisms when the C70 launched was its restricted internal recording formats. With this new firmware, Canon have expanded the 4K intra-frame recording options are possible internally with the C70. You can now record DCI 4K or UHD up to 59.94p, which will have a data rate of roughly 600 megabits per second. And as you drop down your frame rates, this data rate drops also. I would have loved to have seen intra recording options for 4K 120, but I guess that would have been asking a bit too much, and this is a good addition at least. Having the option to shoot intra 4210 bit now for 4K60 is great, as there is a clear step in compression between long op and intra. So for those wanting a little bit more quality out of their slow-mo without shooting raw, this will be a very welcomed addition. The autofocus on the C70 is good, but it's definitely not quite in the same league as the cameras from Canon that use their second generation of dual pixel autofocus, such as the R6 Mark II we looked at recently. However, this new firmware has made it at least a little bit more featured as we now have the addition of eye autofocus, as well as face and eye autofocus in slow and fast mode, which is great to see as this was another complaint that people had about the camera. When using eye tracking, you can easily move between the eyes and even touch between them, which is a nice way to select which you want to focus on. With this eye tracking, you can also use it with Canon's manual focus assist tool. And this means you can still use manual focus if you want to, but benefit from the eye tracking. We've managed to shoot some side-by-side -side tests using the new and current firmware with two C70s and two 28-70 F2s. And really, we can't see a difference in tracking performance. However, where you can see a difference is manual focus in slow and quick mode on the original firmware and face-tracked autofocus on the new one. 
So overall, these are great additions, but I really do hope Canon brings their latest system from the R6 Mark II and brings it to their Cinema EOS line as it's definitely a step up in performance. The system does a good job at tracking eyes once it's identified a face in frame. This means that if you cut off the mouth or get too far away, the camera can struggle sometimes. While the C70 does give you the option to record four channels of audio, you could only monitor two on the standby screen. However, with this new firmware, you can now monitor four on the standby screen as well. XC protocol support has also been added, which means that the camera will fit better into live multicam production workflows, as this will allow it to be controlled remotely via an RCP or remote camera control application. Lastly, they have added support for their new flex zooms and CN8, so the camera is the most optimized when used with them. The C70 is an excellent versatile workhorse of a camera, and at the price point it currently sits at, it really does offer a lot of bang for your buck. We often reach for the C70 when we want something compact and easy to shoot with, for behind the scenes or anything else where lighting and location can change quickly. The only areas that could be improved are its sensor readout speed, low light capabilities, the addition of intraframe or RAW for 4K 120, an update to the dual pixel autofocus 2 system, an SDI output, and maybe CF Express Type B recording media options. But I've pretty much just described the C300 Mark III there with a few tweaks, so I don't know how that would work. We all really enjoy using the C70's excellent Super 35 sensor. However, a full frame version of the sensor would be interesting. Greater than 4K acquisition is good for so many reasons. So seeing a large resolution full frame version of this DJ sensor would be very exciting to see and not only their follow-up to the C70, but also the C300 or 500 style body. Currently, the biggest thing holding Canon back in my eyes is their RF lens lineup. They need to open up the mount to third-party lens manufacturers, or create some more solid mid-range RF mount lenses. Sony still managed to sell absolutely loads of their own E-mount lenses, so Canon shouldn't be worried about third parties taking RF lens business away from them. It will just increase the adoption of their RF mount cameras which should be their key focus. With the C70 being two years old now, should you be worried that there's a new camera around the corner? Well, I wish I could tell you that I knew Canon's roadmap, but I don't. However, we can look at Canon's history of releasing new Cinema EOS cameras. For example, the C300. The Mark II was announced back in September 2015, and the Mark III didn't come out until April of 2020. The original C500 released back in 2012, and the Mark II released in September 2019. So we can see that they do take their time when it comes to refreshing this line of cameras, unlike their photography cameras. We've actually done videos comparing the C70 to the R5C, FX6 and Komodo, which are more than likely the other cameras you are looking at grabbing at this price point. So if you want to learn more about how it compares to the rest of the market, you can check those videos out via the playlist link in the description below. We can clearly see that the C70 with all of its updated firmware has blossomed into an absolutely incredible feature rich camera but I do feel like Canon needs to give the C300 Mark III and 500 Mark II some more love. They have both received updates semi-recently, but the gap between the C300 and C70 isn't massive now, but the price difference is. Yes, the C300 has a very different form factor, better integration into more workflows, and has that all-important SDI output, but does that warrant paying over twice the price? For most filmmakers, I feel the answer will probably be no. I think a price drop is definitely needed for the C300 Mark III. If you have any more questions or thoughts about the C70 and its latest firmware, let us know in the comments. And if you like the video, please give it a like and maybe consider subscribing so you don't miss out on our awesome upcoming content. And thank you so much for watching.